Welcome everyone to Proto One's YouTube series. Um, today we're looking at convergence methods of Creo Simulate analysis. So this comes from a couple of questions that we've received in terms of the inner workings of a structural analysis problems. So you've got a couple of methods that you will see here for an example. So for the sake of time, I have, have stipulated here or specified the load constraints and even the material. So the analysis is ready to be conducted. So the first way or to introduce convergence is talking about what we regard as P1. So P1 convergence method is where you're saying you're picking multipass as an option and then you specify maximum polynomial order as one. So what that means is, is that you're going to take the local displacement, local strain energy based on these conditions here and then the system goes ahead and solves this. So why this is actually important is because when you run this analysis, you will see the level of speed in which you get the result feedback. Now let's explore why these results are this quick. So if you can have a look at this diagram here, this essentially is what we've created. So what we've created is what we call P1. It takes minimum time, but is actually useless in terms of seeing the displacement, stress, and there's no convergence. So all that you're doing here, you get to see the displacement behavior with P1. So what that means is if you go and interrogate the results now, and you open the results window, this is what you're going to see. So let's even showcase the elements, including the load. So what you see there is how this model will behave. So it, it shows you a, a typical scenario if you want to see if your load and your constraints give you a desired result or movement. So that's where you would use this type of convergence method. The other method that you use for convergence, which I use a lot, is what we regard or call quick check. Now, quick check normally does this. Remember when you're doing a structural analysis, it take, we're taking the model, we break all of it using what we call elements, and those small little edges are linked together by simultaneous equations. So what the system does, it looks at where the stress is, solves the equations, and if there's still differences from the previous result and the current results, it creates another iteration and increasing the polynomial order. But with quick check, you're starting at polynomial order three, which is meaning that to the power three. So it does the equations on that, it solves them and spits out the answer. However, the results for the stress in this particular method are not reliable purely because you're just looking at the displacement behavior. Let's have a look at that. So the displacement behavior for, for this, if we were to look here, it gives an indication, let's show elements, let's even do this. It showcases a clear view of where the high stresses might be, even though the values might not be of, of paramount importance, but it just gives you an indication that this is where the high stress is going to be. Even the actual von Mises stress value is actually not that far off. You will see now uh, in a second. So the one that you will always gravitate towards if you were an analyst is what we regard as an SPA or single pass adaptive method. This here is a default method which the system uses. So what it does is, it starts the analysis at polynomial order three, but it does not stop there. It actually does all these iterations, and then it gives you a very good displacement, very well, 
pretty good stress quality. And then the convergence method, it gives you only the root mean square values. And this is actually good for uh, stress uh, testing and variance. So I'm talking about this scenario here, where you have now single pass adaptive. You saw that the time spent on solving those equations is slightly longer than the previous ones. Now let's talk about what we call the multipass adaptive, which gives you a very good displacement and very good stress quality result. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is the following. We now know from single pass adaptive that this is the high value of stresses. I want to compare this with the final results. You'll see this in a second. I'm going to tweak here the size of the elements and also the actual model itself, I'm going to reduce the size of the overall elements so that when I create my mesh, my mesh looks like that. I'm happy with this, so I can proceed. So, right before proceeding, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to create a measure. I'm going to create a measure called my underscore stress so it's my von Meister stress and here's what I'm gonna do I want to measure this not over the model but over a selected geometry which geometry here because I know this is where my high stress is going to be so I want to use an independent measure to verify the value of that stress and that's how I assign my first measure the other measure that I'm going to assign here, if you look here, this is Y. This is Y value here. And why I'm mentioning this is because I want to look at the displacement of this. So the displacement is going to be in this area over here, just like here. So I'm going to have maximum displacement in this area in that direction due to the way the force is acting. So. I'm going to create a measure like this. I'm going to create a measure, call it my displacement. So instead of stress, we're going to convert it to displacement. In terms of magnitude, I'm going to choose Y because I'm only interested in the Y direction. Then I'm going to say over a selected geometry and essentially select that edge. I know now that I'm going to be measuring the displacement in that particular area. When I create my analysis now, I'm going to call this, let's call it MPA, purely because I want to make sure that I remember that that's the multi-pass adaptive. I'm gonna increase the polynomial order. So what this analysis will do is we'll break the model into those small little elements, use the polynomial order one to solve all those equations up until polynomial order nine. Just to make sure that the accuracy is also narrowed down, I'm gonna make sure that I'm using 2% convergence. So if we were running this, it will use here the local displacement, local strain and so forth, but we've got our own measure. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to say solve those entities with, of course, the strain energy. Now that we've defined this, I'm going to run this analysis. You will realize this analysis takes a little bit longer than all those other analyses combined. But what you have here is a convergence quality that is variable and with graphical representation as well. You will see this in a second. That means that I can show the results of the analysis and the graphical representation of those results just to showcase the audience that my solution that I'm presenting has converged and it is regarded as correct. So if I were to showcase the results now for this single uh, multi-pass adaptive, this is what I have. You will see that the value is not far off from the multi-pass adaptive model that we had. So if I were to showcase even the elements here, and this is what I have. All right, so that's basically the multi-pass adaptive. 
Now let's showcase the graph. So I can say, show me the graph of the measure that I've created. Let's take the stress and say, show me that value. So what that means is, if you look here at polynomial order one, the von Mises stress was within the region of 32. Then it did the entire iterations and interpolation and the stress was still changing and it increased the polynomial order. Then it solved those equations, the stress kept on climbing and it increased the polynomial order to be three. Then it kept on doing the interpolation, but then the value stopped changing. If you can see there, we are on 53. So that is how we say the solution has actually converged. And this brings to the conclusion of how do you look at different convergence method in Creo Simulate. Please do not forget to subscribe, like the video and comment. Until next time, goodbye.